Welcome everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning celebration of God's Word. May God richly bless you as you gather around Word this morning and bless us all as a family of God in Christ. Let us begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now throughout this service I advise you to pause when we come to a hymn or a song Pause the uh, YouTube clip for a moment and go to the relevant song or pick your own song. Take a moment to sing and then you can press play again after you've sung the song. Or if you're not singing, just continue watching. We gather before God for a time of confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of each other. We pray. We confess to you, almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become the children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Grant this, O Lord, to us all. Amen. As God's people, now through our baptism, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When we've been gathering together in church on, a, uh, on weeks past, what we would often do is pause for a moment to give thanks. And what do you give thanks for this week? Well, I give thanks for the musicians who led us in playing the music in the early dawn service on our street this morning. It was beautiful to hear their talents and the music that they expressed. It was wonderful. I give thanks to God for that talent. Let us pray now. Almighty and merciful God, you made the disciples glad by the sight of the risen Lord. Remind us that he is always with us and that we now share in his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word as it comes to us from the first reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Therefore, let all Israel be assured. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all for whom the Lord God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message that day were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm for today is verses from Psalm 116, and we read verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 19. Please join me in the responsive part. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? We now go to the second reading for today, and this comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him so that your faith and hope are in God. Now you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have a sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living, enduring word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, reading from verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women have amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us, that, he had, that they had seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and began it to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus had recognised them when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may wish to pause at this moment and join in singing a hymn or a song. I'd like to share with you a few thoughts based on the uh, Gospel reading for today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now there are very few Christians who have an on-the-spot instant conversion to the Christian faith from total unbelief to total rock-solid faith in a very short space of time. Normally coming to a Christian faith is a, a slower process, a journey of weeks and months and possibly years. Faith is like a progression, if you like. It's like a relationship that slowly grows more and more intimate and closer and stronger. Now faith can also have its highs and its lows. For me, I remember singing in a mass choir of over 300 voices in Adelaide it was one of the district synods while I was studying in Adelaide. It was a high point, worshipping together with the mass choir and an extra two or three hundred people, with over six hundred people singing at the top of their voices, praise to God. What a high point that was. Another point, high point for me was an Easter dawn service, once again while I was studying at the seminary. It was a cold and foggy Easter Sunday morning, but as the Easter Gospel was read out loud, the clouds parted and we were flooded with sunshine. You know, there are the highs but there are the lows. When God seems far away, not listening to us, not answering our desperate cries for help. God can seem silent and our faith wavers. It becomes unsteady. Take this moment in world history if you like. As we contemplate the world after the COVID-19 pandemic, what will things be like for us? We, I think, feel uncertain about the future. Now, there were two of Jesus' disciples certainly feeling very uncertain about the future. They had experienced many highs with Jesus. They'd learned to trust and hope in him, but now he was gone, or so they thought. He had left them and their confidence was shaken. How could Jesus, their teacher, their friend, their Lord, their Saviour, abandon them? So were they wrong to have trusted him in, in him the first place? What did the future hold for them? This uncertainty, this insecurity, the way our faith wavers from up and down, back and forth, the questions we have about the future, this self-doubt that we sometimes feel, and the lack of confidence that we sometimes have is really starkly contrasted by God's total, unwavering love and grace in Jesus Christ. God's re relationship with us is firm and unfaltering. You only have to page through some of the Psalms where you hear about this rock-solid bond that God establishes with you and to me. Have a listen to when Moses speaks to the new leader of God's people, Joshua. In Deuteronomy 31, we hear Moses saying this to Joshua. Joshua, be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Take the first verse of Psalm 46, if you like. God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth should change. And then verse that I love so much, it's the last verse of Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's love for us 
is totally reliable, totally steady, totally unwavering. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now this was something those two disciples were about to discover on the road to Emmaus. The way the story unfolds is so wonderful. Jesus doesn't appear to them suddenly, to these despondent disciples suddenly with a loud drum roll, you know, ta-da, ta-da, and appear to them in his glorious resurrection Jesus Christ superstar suit. See, I'm here. Look, it's me. I'm risen from the dead. He doesn't do that. He doesn't even appear to them as someone they recognise. We are told from the beginning that their eyes were kept from recognising him. Now, there's been a debate over what this really means. Some have said that it was God who stopped them from recognising the risen Jesus. It was God who prevented their eyes from seeing who this fellow traveller really was. But I don't believe this to be the case. The disciples were so clouded by their their grief and their sorrow. They were so engrossed in their train of thoughts about Jesus' suffering and death. Their eyes weren't where the action was, like Mary at the garden tomb that morning. Seeing a resurrected Jesus was not an option that they would even consider. They were overcome with grief, with despair. Seeing an, a risen Jesus was far from their world of possibilities. So Jesus comes alongside them and gently walks the path with them. He appears as a fellow traveller on the road of life. In this case, a sorrow, sorrowful, troubled path. Jesus quietly listens to them, like an ordinary person listens to you and to me in our lifetime, who stops, gives their time and listens to where we're at. Jesus comes alongside us the same way, in the lives of ordinary people around us who stop and listen, who are interested in us and in our highs and lows. And then Jesus begins to speak slowly. He begins to reveal himself, but once again, not in a flashy way. He doesn't rush out with his resurrection suit on. No, he slowly begins to speak God's word. He changes their focus, if you like, lifting their eyes, their heads and their hearts away from grief and sorrow, away from the setback of seeing Jesus die and getting them to look in a different direction, pointing them back to scripture, to all the Old Testament prophecies that are how Jesus will suffer, die and rise again. Jesus refers to at least 14 different places in the Old Testament about his birth, his life, his death, his suffering and his resurrection. But they're still in their grief and they still do not recognise Jesus. But yes, their focus has been shifted a little bit. So they invite this stranger into their house for the evening meal. They give the unrecognised Jesus a place at their table. Stay with us, they say. So Jesus goes in to stay with them. And then it happens. Jesus takes the bread and the wine, just as he had done on that first Thursday night when they celebrated the Passover with Jesus. Suddenly their eyes are opened and they realise it's Jesus. He had been their companion all along. He had come alongside them. He had listened to their pain and sorrow. He had allowed them to unburden to him and he had pointed them in a new direction. The risen Jesus had been with them and set them on a new path of life. You may have heard this saying, we are in this together. You've heard and seen these words during these days of virus pandemic. We are not able to gather in a church or worship together as people. We are not able to come to the altar and receive the holy meal as Jesus gave to these disciples at Emmaus. But as Christians, we are together. We are with our risen Lord and Saviour. He is walking alongside us. We have God's word to listen and read and understand, the Holy Spirit to interpret the words to us, a God who listens to our prayers and gives us his peace. We may not always recognise him and we may waver 
up and down in our faith and confidence, but Jesus never wavers. He will never, ever forsake us. Jesus is alive and he is with you and with me, as we are all in this together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You may wish now to pause, if you like, for a time of singing, after which we join in the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, in your holy word. We thank you that you have fulfilled all the promises made to the prophets. We pray for all who hunger and thirst for righteousness and peace at this time. Lead many to the bread of life, Jesus Christ, your Son, so they may find the true righteousness and peace of forgiveness and healing in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, kindle in our hearts the fire of your great love as we share the peace that you have given to us. Empower us all, your people, everywhere to guide others to your word. And so many people search and hunger for understanding and help Reveal your word to them so that their eyes may be opened in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Jesus, at this Anzac Day weekend, we remember that like many of our service men and women in the past, you laid down your life so that we might live. You have won the ultimate war and defeated our greatest enemy, death. This day we give thanks for our country and its hard-won hard -won freedoms that we enjoy. We remember those who died serving in the armed forces of our nation. Preserve our nation in peace and in times of war, pandemic, oppression, economic hardship and health crisis. Give people strength and courage to defend the cause of the vulnerable in our society, even if it may cost us our lives. At this time, we especially lift up to you all of our frontline medical professionals and workers who are giving up their own safety for the help and healing of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have called to lead global operations, nations and local communities. Bless our Prime Minister Scott Morrison and National Cabinet, the State Premiers and their governments and local community leaders, as they take up their calling to serve all without fear or favour. We pray for all people who live and work in the many aged care facilities in Australia and ask people who live and work in these places that you would protect them from the COVID-19 virus. Give comfort to all who are elderly. Bless those who work with them and give them strength and compassion in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you would bless and protect all people who are sick and the dying and all who hunger for health. We pray for those who struggle at this time, and we especially remember the families of those four policemen whose lives were taken in that terrible accident in Melbourne only a few short days ago. Lord, as you heal the crippled man in Jesus' name, bring your healing and comfort to all who need it, and especially bring ultimate healing and eternal life through Jesus' victory over death and hell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have swallowed up death forever and opened up the way for all people to sit with you at the feast of eternal life. Feed us now and always with the bread of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may also wish to pause at this time and pray for those things that are especially on your hearts and minds with your family, your friends and your community. Finally, let us pray for all those things which our Lord would have asked by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favour and give us his peace. Go in peace. You have been born again through the living word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you everyone for joining us with us together this morning and may God's peace go with you into the new week. Thank you.